Kia ora David Clark, Minister of Health. Um, I'm here today along with uh, my colleague Stuart Nash uh, and Kiritapu Allen uh, to acknowledge the work that locals have done, the support they've provided, the compassionate and professional care they have provided to everyone involved in this tragedy. Uh, I've had the opportunity to go through the hospital today um, to meet with staff and hear from them uh, how this has affected them uh, and how events unfolded on the day through the emergency department, uh, the ACU uh, and uh, through wider parts of the hospital. And what's absolutely clear to me is that uh, as New Zealanders we should be incredibly proud of how our health system has responded uh, in the face of a tragedy the size of which no one could have anticipated. Uh, the fact that they have a mass casualty plan in place and had been uh, going through exercises recently uh, was very helpful. Uh, the fact that the people here are professional, uh, that they are used to situations where their job is to resuscitate and stabilise meant that they had the professional care and skills to do what was needed to be done. Uh, and I guess in a way we're fortunate that there was such a highly uh, qualified staff so close uh, to where the events happened and able to respond so immediately uh, to the tragedy and to the, uh, the, the very poor condition that uh, many who were suffering were in. Um, I do want to also acknowledge and thank uh, the Australian uh, Health Service, um, the Office of Help uh, and Support have been tremendous. Obviously the New Zealand health system has responded incredibly well and whilst we haven't uh, needed to call upon uh, much in that regard, it's just the way our countries work together and I do want to thank them for that and uh, also acknowledge that they are also going to provide some ongoing care closer to home for those patients where it is appropriate. Um, I would ask uh, before I take questions um, that we focus first on uh, questions related to the health system response here. Uh, my colleague Stuart Nash uh, is here on the ground and will be able to answer wider questions um, and uh, I want to thank also the staff who have been prepared um, to give a statement. Obviously this is not something they do every day. They are healthcare professionals um, and I ask that, that all of you as media and uh, that us as people in New Zealand give them the space they need now to process uh, the tragedy um, that they have experienced. Uh, they worked quickly, they worked calmly um, I've had descriptions of, of what they did and uh, I couldn't be more proud of the response but I think we can all acknowledge that it will take some time uh, for them now as they work through with family and friends in the community uh, the events that have unfolded and take time to care for themselves as well so I ask that we all respect that and give them the space that they need. Some Open of, to questions. Some of those descriptions, can you tell us what they were like, descriptions of the patients that were brought in? Oh, I think just uh, the extent of the the burns. Um, you know, I've heard people here who have uh, experienced much more broadly from other hospitals talking about the number of people with extensive uh, burns and that uh, this is just not something you see even in a large hospital um, in, in any normal situation. Were there other injuries sustained, like lung uh, damage as well from the gases? Uh, a, lot, a lot of the injuries uh, sustained, as I understand it, were internal. Um, I should also just mention now that there, there is a uh, press conference this afternoon uh, at 3.30 scheduled in Wellington where the operational leads on the response from health and police, uh, GNS and others will be answering questions. Um, I'm happy to answer that one, but if, if there are questions that are of a highly technical nature, it's probably better that the operational leads respond. Given the extent of the that you talked about, Minister, how worried are you that the number of fatalities that going to increase? Oh, look. I think all of us um, are hoping for the best outcome in each individual situation. Uh, I think the actual clinical uh, nature of the injuries is something that uh, is a conversation in the first instance between the families and the clinicians and it's not something that I want to speak to. What's the latest we will support our health professionals uh, in terms of responding to requests that we get as they come through. Um, I've had a good conversation with the Chief Executive, uh, uh, Simon, from the hospital here this morning. Um, of course, uh, the staff now are, are on shift again, 
um, they're talking to each other, they're processing things, and I think um, while some of the, the support they'll need will be obvious now, some of it will become clear over time. Uh, I think the, the system as a whole has responded incredibly well and, and so we've had uh, the capacity there to support the situation but there's no doubt that you know that, that capacity uh, has been stretched. Um, people have stepped up and uh, we've had the skin uh, here necessary for the first uh, round of operations um, and uh, obviously more on the way. Um, that's That's been uh, expressed through the media. Um, so I, I also want to thank the clinicians, the nurses, the allied health workers and all involved in those uh, ongoing responses because it's not just today, this is ongoing and the demands on those staff uh, over coming time uh, will continue to be, be strong. Uh, look, it, the New Zealand um, government has a, a system of uh, making sure that uh, emergency care is there and provided. Um, the detail of any anything beyond that is, is left with foreign affairs, but uh, we, we are a country that likes to uh, make sure that we are looking after people. Can you talk a little bit about the supplies that's here? Is that all coming from the United States and from uh, uh, My understanding is that uh, the majority is coming from the United States, but I think that's a, an operational uh, matter best, best directed to the um, Director General of Health. How many patients are still here in in Fakatane, there are no, no patients from the immediate tragedy. Um, they, they have been transferred to, uh, you know, the, the job here was to resuscitate and stabilise. That is the specialty here, and, and as I said before, uh, we're fortunate that there was a, a group of experts so close to the incident, able and professionally able to, to do that work that needed to be done in order to transfer to where uh, the, the next stage of care could be best delivered. Are those people that Um, the, the reality is that uh, many of them are still here working and, and of course because uh, it's a small tight knit community um, they are sharing their experiences with their fellow staff uh, working through uh, the situations that have occurred and I know that the management are looking carefully to make sure they're supporting staff and uh, where appropriate making sure that they can have time that they need um, to recover and to get the, the support that they need. Please comment on how the skin grafts will help the brain here. Uh, I, I can't really. I'm not a I'm not a clinical expert in terms of uh, how skin grafts work, um, uh, but I know that the processes that are being followed are the ones you would expect in the in the circumstance, uh, and um, they're being dealt with now in, in uh, specialist trauma centres. Okay. Um, I'll stay here if there are any other related questions. But uh, my colleague Stuart Nash. Any questions for yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you make an apology to the families this morning that you spoke with about the way that um, I guess the police response has been handled with the families over the last couple of days? What I did is I acknowledged that perhaps the communication between uh, command headquarters and the families had not been uh, as good as it could have been. And myself and Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement uh, agreed to put a process in place to, to rectify that. What, what was that process? We would keep the families updated on any uh, new announcements coming through and we would brief them uh, on operational details and we would also um, contact them uh, when we believed they felt that there were uh, operations that they needed to be kept aware of. How disappointed are you with how it's been handled over the last 48 hours or so? Oh no, look, I think that the police and the first responders have done an amazing job on the ground and very, very trying situations. I mean, you heard Dr. Clark talk about the state of the patients that came in. I think everyone has done a fantastic job. But now we're moving to a different phase. That's why we've got um, Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement down here running operations. And uh, you can be absolutely assured that the number one priority for the police service is to get the victims off the island and then victim identification. However, this must be done in a way that minimises the risk of further casualties. Uh, there's 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 there's
Like, I absolutely understand their frustration. Of that, there is no doubt. However, police are not prepared to send their men and women into a situation without understanding the risks and then putting, places, uh, putting processes in place to mitigate those risks. So we are communicating with the families, but I understand their frustration, but please, the police professionals are doing this. They are taking the advice from scientists. You know, uh, we have heard that there are poisonous gases on the ground. We have heard that the, uh, that the odds of the volcano erupting again uh, are high. So when, um, when planning an operation to remove the victims, we absolutely need to take into account all those risks before men and women are sent over there to... Wouldn't an eruption make it impossible for you to go? If an, if an eruption happens, mm. wouldn't it be impossible then for you to recover those bodies? It's, it's very, very difficult to say because it depends on a whole lot of variables like the size, the scale of the eruption, the wind, a whole lot of variables that at this point in time we just can't predict. Uh, there's, as Dr. Clark mentioned, there is a meeting at 3.30. I think you'll get a much fuller Sorry. briefing on that. At midday? Yeah, I think you're, you're better off asking Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement on that. Are there any plans? There were two meetings. First of all, there was the, um, the local... Uh, that, sorry, the 10 o'clock karakia, that has been happening uh, since Tuesday, I understand, and that was respectful. Um, uh, Deputy Commissioner Wally Homaha spoke, um, Steph O'Sullivan from the Council spoke, I spoke, uh, Nati Awa spoke, and then afterwards we had a meeting just with um, one of the families, and it's fair to say that was uh, a free and frank and honest conversation that needed to be had. Are there any plans to take the families closer to White Island? Yeah, not, not at this stage. There are exclusion zones in place for a reason, and that is to keep people safe. But, but what we have said we will do is keep the families updated and briefed as to what uh, police are doing. If they, they requested you to take them as close as you could to the exclusion zone, would you do that? Uh, I certainly haven't received that request, and that is not a decision that I would make. That is a decision for Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement. Yes, according to Kitty Tapu Allen, who's one of our local MPs, and I must admit Kitty has been on the ground since, since the beginning, and she has done a fantastic job of liaising uh, on behalf of the government, but yes, they have been liaising uh, with other iwi apart from Ngāti How many families from overseas are near Bakan right now? Sorry, I can't answer that question. What role will they play in the iwi, the neighbouring communities? Well, what I can tell you about Ngāti Awa uh, is we, have, um, we are very clear that uh, they have a very important role to play in this whole process. Uh, and you know, there, there was a suggestion that perhaps um, we weren't taking their role seriously. Well, I can assure you that Deputy Commissioner Wally Homaha is doing an absolutely fantastic role of being the liaison between Ngāti Awa and, uh, and police operations. And you know, Wally did a fantastic job down in Christchurch uh, after March the 15th. And, and Wally and I were talking and saying, it's unbelievable that he is in the same situation before the end of the year, liaising with families about about a, another tragedy. But he is he is doing a magnificent job. So why do you, why are the cultural imperatives important to the constitution? Oh, I mean, Ngāti Awa are the, you know, th th this is incredibly important. Ngāti Awa brothers and sons are over on that island. Uh, we need to treat them with respect. We need to. Uh, understand that the kitanga is in place. We need to ensure that protocol is followed. You know, um, you know their brothers are over there. What is your sense of how the families are, um, Ngāti Awa, and obviously come around the families, the victims' families, mm. what is your sense of how the victims are responding to that part of being cared for, I suppose, by the EU? Well, um, Ngāti Awa again reiter reiterated today that the victims' families are now part of them. And this comes with obligations. And uh, Leone reiterated that one of those obligations is for Ngāti Awa to wrap a level of support around the victims' families that only Ngāti Awa can. And I am incredibly thankful for the support that Ngāti Awa have provided. Leone did say,
with those obligations. They are twofold. So if you're going to have a cup of tea, do your dishes. Look, that's a conversation that I think is best had between um, yourselves and District um, Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement. Given this is the second net fatality incident in this year, why has the police failed to communicate well with family in the first few days of this incident? Because we had lessons learned from Christchurch, mm. the shooting, but then also the earthquake. Mm. Why are we in the same position now? Well, first of all, two completely different instances. One involved uh, an alleged terrorist uh, shooting people, another involved a natural disaster. Um, police, pl look, p police on the ground here are doing everything they possibly can to get those victims off the island. I want to stress that. That is their number one priority, and they are working incredibly hard to do that. Now, if the perception of the families is that the level of communication uh, isn't what it should be, then we need to address that. Keep in mind, that every family has been given um, a victim's advisor from the police. So police are working with the victims, uh, the families of the victims, you know, from day one. In fact, I think that my understanding is those uh, victims' advisors from police were down here on Monday. So police are wrapping a level of support around victims' families uh, that they have always done. This is what police do. Now, um, you can imagine there is a degree of frustration. I mean, I can imagine that. But uh, what we have decided is perhaps the level of communication needs to be just a little bit more robust to ensure that the victims' families are up to date the whole time with what is happening. And, and I buy into that, and that is why um, Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement and I have agreed that the, the communication with the families, uh, the level of communication with the families will increase. To your knowledge, is there any different Mm. Well, um, I'll, I'll go back to, to my original point, and that is that it is the police's priority to get the victims off Waikari, White Island. That is the number one priority. But I also want to reiterate, and I want to make this very clear, that police will not send over um, a victim identification team until they believe it is safe to do so. Now, we understand, and Deputy Commissioner Clem has talked about this, you can never eliminate risk. You can never eliminate risk. But if they understand the risks, then what they can do is put processes in place to mitigate the chances of anyone else being harmed in this. Who's making the final decision if the police commissioner hasn't been there? Who makes that final decision when they get the data from GNS about, is it now time to go? Well, Mike, uh, Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement is in charge of operations on the ground now. Deputy Commissioner John Timms is in charge of operations in Wellington. Um, but it'll, I, I would suggest it is probably Deputy Commissioner John Timms, but with advice from Deputy Commissioner Mike Clement, my understanding is when the Commissioner is back, then that will be his responsibility. Are there any more questions? Or? Uh, not that I am aware of. Thank you very much.